In the guide at number one, um, it asks us again for the real or the imaginary solutions, and they give us two binomials here. Now, we know that each binomial, in order to be what we call a solution, the binomial has to equal zero. So I'm going to take my first binomial and set it equal to zero. I'm going to take my second binomial. What's a binomial? Something that has two terms and set it equal to zero. Now what I'm going to do is add this one over there. And then on that one, I'm going to take away the four. So when I add one, I get x squared equals a positive one. And on this problem, when I take away the four, I get x squared equals a negative four. Now to solve for x, I have to undo the square. So I'm going to take the square root, and that's the same for both of these. Now we know the square root of x squared is x. And since we're taking an even root, we have to use plus and minus, and then the square root of one is one. So we have two solutions here, a plus and a minus one. And then we go to the second one. When we take the square root of x squared, again, we get x. Now this time, when we take the square root of a negative four, we still get plus or minus, but remember, when you take the square root of a negative, you not only get the answer, but it is an imaginary problem. So you get plus or minus 2i. Now if you're wondering what does this mean on a graph, this, mean that you're, this means that on your graph it will cross at positive and negative 1, and those are the two places it crosses. It won't cross at positive and negative 2 because those are imaginary. So on your graph it will cross two times, once at positive 1 and once at negative 1. In problem, in problem got it, number two, again, we got to do the real or the imaginary solutions of the polynomial equation. It's not much different. I have put on different levels. No doubt that part C is the hardest of all of them. So let's start with a level two. X to the fourth equals 16. What we need to do is set it equal to zero. So we're going to take that 16 over, and we're going to get X to the fourth minus 16 equals zero. Now what we need to do is try to factor it. You guys should see that this is actually the difference of perfect squares. So when I factor it, it's a little different than we're used to, but that's okay. x to the fourth breaks down to x squared and x squared, and 16 breaks down to 4 and 4. Remember to get rid of the middle term. One's a plus and one's a minus. Now we have a problem just like we did in the last got it. We set each binomial equal to zero. So x squared plus 4 equals 0, and x squared minus 4 equals 0. So the idea is to get it to a factored form so that you can set it equal to 0 so we can take our next step of solving. So in this left-hand side, take away the 4, x squared equals negative 4, and square root it. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of negative 4, since it's even, you're doing plus and minus, 2 I because you're taking a square root of a negative. So there are two solutions. We should have four solutions because this was an x to the fourth problem. On the next, the right-hand binomial, we add four, so we get x squared equals a positive four, and then you take the square root again, and you get x equals plus and minus two. So here are two real solutions. Here are two imaginary solutions. In terms of graphing this problem, your graph would cross at positive and negative 2, and it's impossible for it to cross at positive and negative 2, positive, plus and minus 2i. Let's go back to a level 1, part b. First step, set it equal to 0, take everything to the left, because that's where the highest degree of x cubed is. So x cubed plus 2x squared when you move it across the equal sign minus 8x when you move it across the equal sign equals 0. Now we've got to think of how to factor this. First step to factoring, GCF. Pull out an x. So by pulling out that x, bye Jean, have a good day. By pulling out that x, you are able to get a trinomial and you know how to factor trinomials. x squared breaks down to x and x. 
And to get a positive 2 from this negative 8, we need a plus 4 and a minus 2. Once we get it broken down as much as possible by factoring, we set each one equal to 0. So the first, x equals 0. That was easy. The next one, x plus 4 equals 0. Bye, Jane. The next one, x minus 2 equals 0. This one's already solved, so we go to these two. Take away 4, x equals negative 4. This one, add 2, x equals 2. It started as a cube problem up there, so we should have 1, 2, 3 answers. All of them are real. So in terms of graphing this, this one would cross your x-axis three times. Once at 0, once at negative 4, and once at positive 2. Now for the more difficult one, level 3. First things first, we got to kind of distribute and get rid of those parentheses, and then we'll deal with it. So x cubed plus 8x equals 8x plus 8. And that came from distributing things together. Next thing we have to do is set it equal to 0. I'm going to take everything to the left because that's where my highest degree of x cubed is. So I get x cubed. Oh, look what happens when you move that 8x over. They cancel out. And then the minus 8 equals 0. This is new to you this year. You did not learn this in Algebra 1. This is new factoring to you. Remember, we talked about it at the beginning of the lesson. This is the difference, because of the minus sign, of perfect cubes. Okay? When you factor it, you do a small parenthesis, and you do a large parenthesis, and you set it equal to zero. Your signs correspond to whatever's up here. Here's the pattern. Same, different, plus. You gotta memorize that. The signs go same, different, and plus. So, this one's going to have a minus, because that's the same as what I see right here. This one's going to have a plus, because it's different than what I see up there. And this back sign will always be a plus. Now we got our signs in. The first item you put in is the cube root of the first guy. So the cube root of x cubed is x. And then the second thing you do is you take the cube root of 8 and put it here. Two. Okay, now watch where I'm pointing, okay? This spot is this thing squared. One more time. This spot is this thing squared. So x squared. Watch again. This spot are these two multiplied together. 2x. And last, this spot is this one squared, so 4. Whew. I know that was a lot of work and it's new to you. You might want to just rewind the video and watch it again. Now as much as you try, this will never factor. And that is just something about cubics you need to know. That trinomial will never factor. Now we do know we can set this one equal to zero, right? And x minus two equals zero, x equals two. The first one's not bad. It's the second one. Now if I were to ask you during class and I said, how do we solve something that doesn't factor? Hopefully you would tell me, well, if I can't factor it, I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. Okay, so negative v is negative two. Plus or minus square root of v squared so 2 squared is 4, minus 4ac, so a is 1, c is 4, all over 2a, and a is 1. You remember this, you might need to go back to chapter 4, we did this in 4-7, the quadratic formula. So it's negative 2 plus or minus square root of, well this will be 4 minus 16, so negative 12 inside of there, all over 2. And you remember this, 12 is made up of 4 times 3. 
So I get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2, 3 left over, but wait, it was a negative square root, so you need an i. All these rules are coming all the way back to haunt you, aren't they? All over 2. The 2's cancel out, because it's in all part of them, and you get negative 1 plus or minus i square roots of 3 as your other two solutions. So you have one real solution up here, and you have two imaginary solutions down here for a total of three solutions. The good news is, in Got It number three, we can use our calculator to help us find the real zeros. Just remember that it, if it asks you for the real solutions, it's asking you where it crosses the x-axis, okay? And those are called zeros, okay? So AKA are also known as zeros. All right, so let's go ahead, get our calculators, and put this in. But wait, before you put it in, set it equal to zero. So x cubed plus x squared minus x plus one. Don't forget, when it crosses the equal sign, they change signs. When it crosses the equal sign, yeah, it changes sign. Okay. Let's go to y equals and plug this thing in. So x cubed, see the calculator okay? Plus x squared minus x plus 1. So we get our equation in there, and what we have to do next in order to find our zeros is let's just do zoom 6 and take a look at our problem. That graph looks pretty good. Um, you can see it only has one real solution, and it's right there. It's where it crosses the x-axis. Can you see it? So we know it's going to be right around negative 2-ish. So what we're going to do is zoom in. Well, actually, we don't even need to zoom in. We just we can find the zero. I don't think we need to zoom in. You can if you want. So watch the buttons you hit. It's second, trace. And actually, it goes to calculate. You want to select zero, so select number two. So I'm going to hit the number two. And it asks me to go to the left of my zero. So if this is where the zero is. I need to scroll past it until I'm to the left of it. Done. Hit enter. Now scroll to the right of it and let it take a guess. So my zero is at negative 1.84. So x equals negative 1.84. This is for part A, by the way. Okay? And of course, y is going to equal zero. Um, that's all we're going to do for this problem. Um, part B. In problem three, which method seems to be an easier and more reliable way to find the solutions of the equations? So they're asking us to go back to problem three. They gave us two methods. You can clearly say, you see, or excuse me, you can clearly see that I didn't even like method one. So we're just gonna say, this way is the easiest way, okay? So when it says which way is the easiest, just write find zeros on calculator. I wouldn't even show you at method one because I just thought it was kind of silly. All right, moving on to got it number four. Don't be intimidated that the whole back of the page is for got it number four. I just kind of wanted to move it over so you had enough room. All right, word problem. What are three consecutive integers whose product is 480 more than their sum? Boy, there's a lot of math words in here. If you don't know what consecutive means, we're in trouble. So let's start there. Consecutive means they're in a row. Integers means that it's like one, two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative three, all right? Product means multiplication. More than means addition. Sum also means addition. So there's a lot of stuff going on in there that you should already know, but we went over it again. Okay, so let's go ahead and start labeling. Since we said consecutive means they're in a row, if we call the first one x, that's great. The second one would be one more than that, and the third one would be an extra one more than that. So x, x plus one, and x plus two represent our consecutive integers. All right, so we got those labeled. The next thing we need to do is find their product. So their product means to multiply them all together. So that represents their product x times x plus 1 times x plus 2. Their product is, so equals, 
480 more than, so we do plus 480 in the back, you learned that in Algebra 1, their sum. So x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2. Whew. So what I'm going to do is combine my like terms on that side. I'm going to leave my left side alone. I'm going to cheat a little bit online or on my calculator. And let's get things together here. So that's 1, 2, 3x. And we got 1 and 2 makes 3 and 480 makes 483. And now I'm going to set everything equal to 0. Now, if you want to, just like we did in the last problem, you can distribute all of this together. But I'm going to show you something real cool about your calculator. If you just kind of let it chill out and you don't distribute it up, all you have to do is move these items in and type it into your calculator the way you see. So you can save yourself a lot of hassle and not distribute if you don't want to. So take the 3x over and you get minus 3x. Take the 483 over and you get minus 483. And now it's equal to 0. If you want to take the time to distribute that, go ahead. But I'm going to show to you that you actually don't need to on your calculator. So you can type it into your calculator exactly the way that you see it on your paper. So x, notice I'm not changing anything at all. Keeping my parentheses the same. And there's my equation. Your calculator will distribute it together itself. Hit graph and let's just see what this thing even looks like. Okay, so it looks like a straight line, but we are to zoom out, you would see it's part of a huge quadratic, or excuse me, cubic. Now, here's the neat thing. You guys can almost see where it crosses just by counting over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see how you can see where it equals it? That's really nice. You don't even have to do the whole zero thing on your calculator. You know that x has to be 7. Because if you look at your calculator one more time and you count it over, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is where it crosses your x-axis. So 7 is your value for x. That means x plus 1, the next number, is 8. And the next number, x plus 2, is 9. So here are your three consecutive integers. And if you want to check it, let's do that. What is their product? If you tested to see if you did this right, 7 times 8 times 9, so this is their product, and I'm just double checking right now, their product is 504. Now their sum, because they told us a little bit about this, didn't they? Their sum, 7 plus 8 plus 9, is 24. They are saying that the product is 480 more than their sum. Is that true? Well, all you have to do is, what's 24 plus 480? 504? Then we must have done it right. 7, 8, and 9 are your consecutive integers.